Yeah, so these examples are very intentionally constructed, and so watch them in order. So first, watch example zero, where we prove Cauchy's theorem for contour integration, and then watch the last example, where you will have learned details that I'm not going to repeat in this video. <laughs> and um, yeah, so um, this is what we're doing in this video. It's really, really cool. Um, all right, so we're evaluating uh, this integral here where m takes on one, two, and so on. Um, okay, okay, cool. Uh, so m is uh, the natural numbers up to capital M, yeah? Okay, so how do we do this? And capital M as large as we'd like, right? How do we do this? Well, clearly we're going to use Cauchy's theorem, <laughs> right? All right, um, so uh, first, if the contour C here, right? does not enclose z equals a, then we know by Cauchy's theorem, the integral is going to be equal to zero. And that's so because, well, the function here, f of z, is one over uh, z minus a to the power m. And so then, uh, that function f of z that I just said is analytic for all z not equal to a. That is, it is differentiable for all z not equal to a. So if the contour doesn't enclose z equals a, then f of z will be analytic uh, on and in that contour. Yeah? Okay, and therefore, by Cauchy, uh, we know that the integral is equal to zero, right? Okay, and again, we proved Cauchy's uh, theorem in example zero, so uh, check that out to see why this result um, happens, and it's really, really powerful, right? Like this result. Okay, cool, because there are infinitely many contours that we can draw that don't enclose z equals a, and so on all of those infinitely many contours, this integral is equal to zero. I'll show you a couple of like visuals of like contours where um, this integral is equal to zero. For example, uh, if z equals a is this complex number uh, in the imaginary plane, then... Um, this contour surely doesn't enclose it, and it's a simple closed contour. Right, there's a small gap right there that, that I had to close. Anyway, yeah, on this contour, um, this integral is equal to zero. And even if the contour got teasingly close to um, enclosing z equals a, as long as it doesn't, uh, this integral is equal to zero. So on this contour as well, right? Okay, okay, okay. So you get it, you get it, you get it. Um, now, what about if um, the contour does enclose z equals a? Then we use the idea of the crosscut. I first introduced the idea of the crosscut in a video on the integral of 1 over z. So check out that video to, you know, have that initial uh, insight um, and education on <laughs> what the crosscut is. But this idea of the crosscut is really, really cool. And at the same time, really, really important uh, for a lot of videos. Um, so uh, learn about it. And uh, I mentioned it in the last uh, video, an example one that is. And I'm going to say just enough in this video. But if you need a thorough education on it, then um, watch the videos I just mentioned. Okay, cool. So the idea of the crosscut is like, well, to take a contour that encloses did I go too fast? We didn't miss anything, did we? No. Yeah. So here's z equals a, and then take a contour that encloses z equals a. So this blue contour. And what we're going to do is then uh, draw a small circle of a certain radius r about uh, z equals a. So a small circle centered at z equals a. That small circle would look like this, right? Okay, cool. And then, and then, we're going to make a cross cut, and this is how like the cross cut is constructed. Um, this is C here, the contour that encloses Z equals A, and this is uh, this red circle is C A, and it's a small um, circle centered at Z equals A. That's what's true about this um, inner contour C A, C sub A, if you want to be specific. Okay, but yeah, C sub A is the small red circle, and then we make a cross cut. This is the cross cut we're making. Okay, now we have a contour delta that is going to be made of 
the contour C and the contour CA and uh, the cross cut here and here. So four contours together. Uh, C, this cross cut taking us in, and then CA, uh, this cross cut taking us back out. These four contours are going to make a contour delta. Yeah, now again, just to reiterate why this uh, cross cut idea is really, really cool. Um, let me first animate like how Delta navigates through the contour and notice that uh, when uh, we're going around Delta, uh, we come this way and in and then we go this way. But this is against the grain on the contour CA. That's to say that like uh, integration on um, contours uh, is positively oriented or it is positive in the counterclockwise direction. And so um, C sub A, the red um, circle, is positively oriented in this direction. But then when we're moving along delta, we have to go against that direction. And therefore, uh, when we're doing integration over the contour delta, uh, we're going to take the negative of C sub A. Now, notice also before I move on that the contour delta uh, does not enclose Z equals A. It like avoids it, and that's what's really cool about this uh, crosscut idea. Um, by doing this kind of a construction, you avoid kind of isolate the singularity, and a singularity is where um, a function of a complex variable is not differentiable. That is, it is not analytic. So z equals a is avoided in this kind of uh, a construction. So that's why this crosscut idea is really really cool. And okay, now. Um, just a little bit more on the cross cut is this. So um, the idea takes full effect by uh, sending the radius of this red circle to zero. So by considering the limit as this radius goes to zero. Because then what happens is, well, the contour delta will continue to avoid the singularity. But then um, this line here, uh, the cross cut in and the cross cut out, and I didn't finish uh, displaying the arrows, the cross cut in and the cross cut out, right? Like these guys will start to overlap as this radius goes to zero, right? And so they will um, have integral values that are opposite in sign, but equal in magnitude. So equal in absolute value, but opposite in sign. And therefore they will sum to zero. The integral over this uh, contour in and this contour out will be equal to zero. And so then the integral over delta that was constructed of these four contours is just going to amount to the integral over this blue contour C plus uh, the integral over the negative of uh, the contour uh, C sub A. Okay. All right, cool. I think I did a lot of uh, elaborating on the um, crosscut idea more so than I thought I would, but um, it's to your benefit, and so hopefully you're happy. All right, um, let's continue then, because we've um, now figured out our path. Now, as I said, the uh, integral over the contour delta does not include uh, z equals a, and therefore by Cauchy's theorem, the integral over delta is equal to zero. This is really cool, um, right? Yeah, okay, so uh, we know because the contour delta does not enclose z equals a, as I already pointed out. It avoids it through the circle, right? Like circumvents it. Um, because of that, um, the integral over the contour delta is equal to zero. But wait, the integral over the contour delta is equal to the integral over the contour c plus the negative of the integral over the contour c a. That is, if this is true, right, then this follows, this has to follow. Right? Okay, cool. But then <laughs> what this means, and of course, F here is 1 over um, Z minus A to the power M, just being clear. But yeah, what this here amounts to is saying that the integral over C is equal to the integral over C A. Yeah? Okay, cool. So then instead of doing the integral over C, we could just do the integral over C A, which is convenient, more convenient because, well, C A is a circle, the red circle specifically, right? And so instead of doing the integral over C, we can now just do the integral over C A and we'll be good. All right, so let's do that. And 
So to do the integral over CA, um, notice what CA is and polar coordinates. Uh, we can say that CA and polar coordinates is given by this equation. And uh, if it's not clear why, let's elaborate a little bit. All right, okay, we're going from here to the elaboration. Okay, remember, Z equals A is here. Now, uh, consider this black circle centered at the origin. This black circle centered at the origin of a particular radius R. We don't know how big it is, right? Like, we don't know the scale anyway, but yeah, of a particular radius R. Uh, in polar coordinates, this black circle in a complex uh, plane is defined by Z equals R e to the I theta. Right? But I want this black circle to turn into the red circle that I just displayed. So what I do is I shift it by an A amount. So I just go plus A at the end of this. And then the uh, black circle will shift so that its center is A. Remember, a complex number A comes with kind of like an X and a Y coordinate, right? One to um, let it move along the real axis and another to let it move along the imaginary axis. So as soon as I go plus A here, it's shifted uh, from having um, the origin as the center to having A as the center. So this is what I'm saying. This is what we're going to get. But this equation for the um, red circle is this. But then if we subtract A from both sides of this equation, then we will have what I had displayed, right? Right there, right here, yeah? Okay, cool, cool, cool. So then um, DZ, uh, differentiating both sides of this equation, is going to be this. So we have a substitution for DZ. Uh, and um, with this, uh, we could now rewrite F of Z and in terms of uh, polar coordinates. And notice then that will mean that the limits of integration, since we're on a circle, are going to go from 0 to 2 pi. I'm going to continue to write c sub a as far as the limits of integration, but it's 0 to 2 pi. And um, yeah, for some reason, I forgot my loop here uh, to show that it's uh, the integral over a closed contour, but you've been paying, in, paying attention and hopefully <laughs> that's not, that alone is not reason to re-record. I'm normally like really annoying about details like that and I would re-record this video but please don't make, don't make me do that okay okay um <laughs> all right so then I which is this here uh, if we just substitute everything uh, that we just uh, wrote down and polar coordinates is going to turn into this okay now uh, the next thing I'm, I'm going to display is just a little bit of algebra and simplifying so uh, in the numerator, this I stays, right? Like it's got no partner. But uh, we're going to get R to the M in the denominator. But R to the M in the denominator, if we move it up to the numerator, is R to the negative M. But we already had an R to the power 1. So we're going to get R to the power 1 minus M. And similar simplifying uh, will um, get us to um, this. Like now. Um, I said similar simplifying instead of thoroughly explaining what happens with the e to the powers, one in the denominator and the numerator, but um, it's like more cumbersome than like hard to explain, and it's not hard for you to figure out either. But here it goes. I'll just try really quickly. So here in the denominator is going to be e to the i m theta, but when it moves up to the numerator, it's going to be e to the negative um, i m theta. If we factor out a theta to the right and a negative i to the left, then this is what we're going to have to write. And this i here again is that i right there. Yeah? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, now, remember, I already said that this integral is um, from 0 to 2 pi since we're on a simple close contour that is the red circle, the red small circle. So we're going from 0 to 2 pi. So then um, we have two situations. What happens when m is equal to 1 and when m is not equal to 1 and therefore 2, 3, and on and on, right? Okay, now, when m is equal to 1, notice that the exponent on e is going to be 0 because this here is going to be 0, and so negative i times 0 times theta is 0, so e to the 0 is 0. So we have i times e to the e to the 0 is not 0. <laughs> e to the 0 is 1. My bad. We have i times e to the 0, and so that's 
i times 1, so just i. And then in this part, we're going to get negative 1 plus 1 as a power of r, so that's r to the 0. So we just get i d theta. And i d theta integrated from 0 to 2 pi, right? Well, we can take out the i. 0 to 2 pi of d theta is just going to be 2 pi. So uh, this integral is going to be uh, 2 pi i. 0 to, uh, to 2 pi of i d theta is 2 pi i. But we have 1 over 2 pi i here. And so 1 over 2 pi i times 2 pi i is going to turn into 1. So the integral will be 1 when m is equal to 1. Now, if m is not equal to 1, um, then we'll have, uh, try to follow. Like, I didn't want to do all this writing. But yeah, I'll, I'll do a good job, but try to follow. So we'll have um, 0 to 2 pi, and then i e to the minus i times well, some integer here, some positive integer, right? And then times theta, right? And r to some positive integer when m is not 1, right? Uh, but r to whatever integer here is a constant, just like i is a constant. So those we could take out in front of the integral, right? Like, And so we have um, that, right? They're constants. We're integrating over d theta. But then we have e to the minus i times an integer times theta. Now, remember what e to the i theta is. e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i times sine theta. So e to the minus i theta, yes, I'm leaving out the integer, not a big deal. But yeah, um, e to the minus i theta is going to be uh, cosine of negative theta plus i times sine of negative theta. Now, cosine is even, so cosine of negative theta is the same as cosine of theta, and sine is odd, so we can uh, write that sine of negative theta is negative sine theta. So that means e to the minus i theta is equal to cosine theta minus i times sine theta. I'm doing this in my head so you can follow. All right, now, if we integrate that from 0 to 2 pi, setting aside the theta is being multiplied by an integer, the integral from 0 to 2 pi, well, the cosine part is going to be cosine of uh, 0 is 1, but cosine of any uh, integer multiple of 2 pi is also 1. So the cosine part is going to give us a 1 minus 1, right, when we evaluate from 0 to 2 pi. And then the sine part, well, any integer multiple of um, sine is equal to 0, including sine of 0. And therefore, the sine part is going to give us 0. And therefore, this whole integral is going to turn into 1 over 2 pi i times 1 minus 1. That is 1 over 2 pi i times 0, and therefore it's 0. That's all to say that, in some rate, uh, when m is equal to 1, uh, we have that i, the original integral we're working on, is equal to uh, 1. And when m is not equal to 1, i is equal to 0. And this is for a contour that encloses z equals a. Of course, as we said at the start of the video, for a contour not enclosing z equals a, the integral is equal to zero by Cauchy, yeah? All right, cool, cool, cool. I hope you really enjoyed this, and um, 